If you aren't utilizing grids and frames for your YouTube channel, you might be missing out on a great Canva feature. Where are they? Why are they beneficial? How can you use them for YouTube? And so many more questions will be answered today in the Canva Classroom. Grids are placeholders for up to 12 colors, images, or videos. You can find them in the Elements tab. Type grid into the search bar or Scroll down to find the configurations that Canva has to offer. We'll come back to grids after learning a little bit about frames. Just like grids, frames are placeholders for colors, images, or videos. You can find them by typing frames into the elements or scrolling on the elements tab and seeing select all. You can see all of the options that Canva has to offer and some are for more than one color, image, or video too. Let's grab three different frames here to learn a few things that you need to know. I'll search gradient in the elements tab and go to the photos area to select one of these awesome gradients. Left click the image and when your cursor goes over the circle frame, the picture slides right in. You can use the same technique for videos. Your rectangle image is now in the shape of a circle. Letter frames are another fun feature that Canva has to offer. Let's grab a different gradient and slide it right into the letter. The image now looks like a letter. When you double click an image or video, you can adjust it side to side. You can even take these circle points and enlarge the image or video within the frame too while you're in double click mode. Another fun frame that Canva has are the cell phone frames. Let's move over to the videos tab for this one. Slide in a video into the cell phone frame. And for the videos, you can do the same thing as an image, but you can also change the time. Click the video and move the timer where you want it to be. You can do anything you want to images or videos within these frames that you can do with them when they aren't in a frame. Let's go back to look at grids. I love using one panel grids to make sure my YouTube banners are sized properly for mobile devices. Comment channel art if you need a lesson about sizing for YouTube banners. You can size these grids to be any size you want. You will notice that there is a space between the panel placeholders. You can change how much shows behind it from zero to 100. Let's look at a five panel grid so I can show you why I love using them for designs. I like to shrink them down and create a color palette. This was especially helpful when I didn't have Canva Pro, but Canva Pro saves me so much time as a content creator, it's worth the money for me. If you've never tried it out, it's a game changer. Let me know if you want a free trial from Canva so I can give you an affiliate link to give it a try. Tap each panel and then the color box at the top. You can add any color combination you want. The best part is that now all of the colors are in the document so you can add a page and create a design using all of the colors from the grid. You can apply the colors to any of the grids or frames. It doesn't need to be the five panel grid like this, but it's just my preference to have more than three options. Have you ever found something that's beautiful and not been able to put it into a circle frame? It's probably because it's not actually considered an image or video. Let's look up flowers and go to the graphics tab. Some of these graphics actually will insert into a frame or grid. Let's try a few different things. I've noticed that if the graphic is recolorable, it will not go in at all. And if it doesn't have the recolorable option, it might go in. Animations also won't go into a frame or grid. Another reason something might not go into a frame or grid is if you've locked it. Unlocked, this graphic goes right into the frame. You can remove the graphic by right-clicking Detach Image. Let's lock this and try to put the same image into the circle frame. It absolutely will not go in. I've already mentioned that I love to use grids for channel art, 
but how else could you use grids or frames for YouTube? For grids, I like to use the one panel placeholder as an overlay for B-roll. The reason why I like to use a grid is because if I give it a transparency, it will maintain the same transparency as I swap out images, videos, or colors. This gives me a template to be able to use for multiple B-roll footages. Let me show you what I mean by looking in a folder that I have for this lesson. Right click, set as background. We can click the play button to see what both videos look like together. What if I change my mind and want to swap out to a different overlay? I can easily do that because my transparency will be set. Before moving on to a way to use circle frames for YouTube, I love seeing my students in the comment section and love to showcase those comment sections during my tutorials. How can you use frames for YouTube? I love to use the circle frame for bullet points like I used in this YouTube community post. If you want to know exactly how I created this effect using frames, then check out the tutorial on your screen. If you like today's Canva tutorial and want to see more like it, make sure you are subscribed, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye!